Hello students, this is a lecture on the development of the tongue. The body of the tongue extends from the tip to the terminal sulcus. The root extends behind the sulcus. At the fourth week, the tongue begins development from the anterior wall of the throat, protruding upward. It develops in the region of the first four branchial arches. Three anterior swellings will fuse to form the anterior tongue, the lateral lingual swellings, and the tuberculum in par. The single swelling behind the tuberculum in par is the cupula and forms the posterior portion of the tongue. The foramen cecum is the embryonic origin of the thyroid gland. It originates by the 17th day in utero. The thyroid gland migrates to its proper location, leaving behind a cord of epithelium, which is called the thyroglossal tract. Clefts, macroglossia, microglossia, aglossia, and ankyloglossia are developmental defects. Macroglossia is an excessively large tongue, microglossia an excessively small tongue, aglossia is the absence of a tongue, and ankyloglossia is a tongue that is tied down to the floor of the mouth by a frenum attachment close to the tip of the tongue. This image shows aglossia, which is no tongue. This is a picture of a bifid tongue or forked tongue. The tongue failed to fuse at the tip and has two prongs. This image shows macroglossia or an excessively large tongue. And this image shows ankyloglossia where the short frenum attachment is attached close to or at the tip of the tongue, preventing proper movement. It is frequently referred to as tongue tie. The tongue is relatively large by the end of the second month, the time the palatine processes form. The upper surface of the tongue nearly touches the septum. The palatine processes initially grow vertically along the sides of the tongue. At the point when the tongue drops to the floor of the mouth, the lateral palatal processes begin to grow horizontally. The lateral processes grow medially and the premaxilla grows posteriorly. This image shows the lateral palatine processes growing vertically next to the tongue. Once the tongue has dropped to the floor of the mouth, then the lateral palatine processes start to develop horizontally and approach each other at the midline. The premaxilla in this area then grows posteriorly to join the lateral palatine processes. You can see here the median palatine process or the premaxilla and the lateral processes and the they move towards the midline and the anterior moves the premaxilla develops posteriorly. The palatine processes meet at the midline and fuse with the nasal septum. The anterior borders of the palatine processes meet and fuse with the premaxilla. This forms the roof of the mouth and the floor of the nose. Fusions at the roof of the mouth should be completed by 12 weeks. Bone has not filled in to fuse at the midline until after the fourth month. Groups of epithelial rests can persist in lines of fusion, which later 
can give rise to cysts. Cleft palate is evident by the end of the third month. Clefts may be small or they may be extensive and they may involve only the uvula, the soft palate, the hard palate, or the alveolar ridges, or all of these. These images show, this image shows the uvula being involved, the midline and the side involving the lip and the palate, and both sides of the lip and the entire palate and the uvula. By the end of the 12th week, the head and face have pretty much completed their formation. This concludes this lecture on head and neck, histology and embryology, the development of the tongue.